Hey guys, it's Michelle, and I'm back with part two of my November wrap-up. Next, I was inspired by the Goodreads Choice Awards, and I picked up uh, Kitchens of the Great Midwest. This is a story about a chef who's described as having a palate of a lifetime. Uh, she's very successful, kind of very difficult to get one of her meals, the way she's got things arranged. The amazing thing about this story is it's told, it's a novel in stories, so each chapter is told from someone else's viewpoint. If I remember right, one of the viewpoints is hers kind of early on. The people know her, you know, for varying lengths of time and varying degrees of closeness, but it's just so interesting how all the stories end up intertwining in the end. I was very excited that I read this as an ebook because even the smallest of characters that just get the most minor mention end up coming back into the story. Um, I liked Eva, but I didn't really know her all that well. I knew the things that were happening in her life, but not really her thoughts or feelings on them towards the end. But like I said, the other characters just made it awesome how they were interacting with each other and, and how it all unfolded was just phenomenal. You've got brilliant descriptions of food. There are some recipes included. Um, but there was one character that I think stole the show. And as far as like a character going through um, personal growth and development, I would say another, you know, another character really kind of stole the spotlight from Eva. But it was just an amazing read. How it all came together was just phenomenal, and I'm interested in uh, looking at more from that author. That was J. Ryan Stradall. If you can't tell, I gave that one five stars. All right, next I read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson, and this is a graphic novel. I'm so glad I picked this up. This was also one of the ones included in the Goodreads Choice Awards, but I already had it, and I was planning to read it anyhow. This is Nimona. She is described as a kid in the book, and she decides she wants to be an evil villain, but she needs to do an apprenticeship with the town's villain before she can. So this is the town's villain. He used to go to the hero school. However, he was injured, lost his arm, and had to leave the hero school, and since then has decided that the hero establishment doesn't always have the people's best interest in mind, and so he's trying to thwart their plans. But he goes by the rules. He doesn't like to kill people. He just likes to stop their evil plans with his evil plans. So when Nimona comes on as an apprentice, she introduces a ton of chaos into his life. She does things he would never expect. He's having to clean up her messes and reel her back in. And I think it was just very symbolic of parenthood, especially uh, someone who takes on a child, uh, not from birth, but from a later on, uh, a little later in their development. It was phenomenal. It was really good. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of the artwork. Uh, the color scheme kind of changes at times, uh, depending on what's going on. It wasn't the brightest of colors, but I really enjoyed the storyline and... Um, I thought it was fabulous. I ended up giving it four stars. So glad I read this one. It had more depth than I ever thought. Next, I picked up some more sci-fi because I've just been in a sci-fi kind of a mood. And this was Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. This is the first in a trilogy that she has written. And it's about Debbie Anna Morris, who is a kick-butt space mercenary. That means she has a special armor that allows her to function in space. Um, she's excelled in school at armored sports, like more so than the guys even. Uh, she's in about her ninth year of her career, and she's advanced as far as she can without moving to a desk job, and she is not about to go to a desk job. So she wants to get into this uh, group that works for the king, and they're called the Devastators, but they usually require you to have 20 years of experience, and they come to you, you don't come to them. But someone told her that there's kind of a fast track if you serve on this one trader ship. She's like, trader ship? I don't want to be like some kind of rent-a-cop. And they're like, well, it's dangerous. If you look up their record, you'll see. And sure enough, she gets interested. She wants to advance her career, so she takes a job. And chaos ensues, and adventure goes underway. There's even some romance thrown in there. And it was fabulous. I was entertained from beginning to end, and I just thought it was fabulous. I ended up giving it five stars. Next, I picked up Straight to You by David Moody, and this book intrigued me for two reasons. One, it's uh, 
It's an apocalyptic tale, but it's about a husband and wife who are separated when the apocalypse begins and they're trying to make their way to each other. Uh, the second reason it intrigued me is because the author rewrote it. It was originally written like in the mid-90s, and then the author had some other success and decided he hated the story and it just needed to be redone. So there was very little of the original story still left. Um, but this was the rewrite. And it was apocalyptic. And so I expect those to be bleak. And this was really bleak. However, the pacing of this one did not work for me. I really didn't connect with the characters at all. And usually in apocalyptic tales, like, you think there might be a problem. And it just... Things happen and it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and, and you just feel more doomed and more doomed. But this one was, hey, there might be a problem and, oh my gosh, the world is definitely going to end. There is no hope. And then it stayed there for a long, long time at there is no hope and the world is going to end in this bleak. And it just, it didn't like progress like I expected it to. Um, and like I said, I wasn't attached to the characters. So it was kind of weird. It was interesting uh, but I ended up giving it three stars in the end. All right, next was my last task for the 2015 Read Harder Challenge, and that was an audiobook. When I'm not traveling alone, I just am not interested in audiobooks, it turns out. So I picked the shortest one I could that I already had downloaded, and that was The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Coelho? It was narrated by Jeremy Irons, and I thought, it's only four hours long. Jeremy Irons, it's got to be good. You know, this book has pretty good reviews. So I start listening and I'm doing some coloring along with it because I'm too distracted by anything else. And it just seems like a hodgepodge of sayings. I felt like um, I was, you know, at a store reading the kind of motivational magnet section or something um, instead of, you know, reading a novel. It was just too parable-ish. It was just two blended wisdoms of different from different places and it just had didn't seem coherent to me at all. I, I just really didn't enjoy it and I ended up giving it one star. Um, so I think it's safe to say I hated it. I hated it. Okay so I won't be picking up anything else by that author and even Jeremy Irons couldn't save it for me. I just thought it was a bunch of drivel so I'm sorry if anyone's offended by that but that's just my opinion. I thought, I need to go back into some safer waters. So I picked up Honor's Night by Rachel Bach. This is book two in the Paradox Trilogy. So we were back to Deviana Morris, the kick-butt um, space mercenary. And, of course, a lot had gone down since the first book. And you learn a whole lot more about what's really going on with this ship, what organizations are involved, and why. Uh, there are a whole lot more alien interactions, um going on in it. There's all kinds of action, all kinds of things going on, but something about this one just didn't work as well. The romance was very much tamped down in this one, um, and I think the story kind of needed that, like, to give it just that little extra something. Um, the, the character, main character, just seemed really wishy-washy, and at first that really bugged me, and the more I think about it, it's like the first time she hasn't had like a military command telling her, you know, who the good guys are, who the bad guys are, what to do, how to handle things. So she's having to figure it out all on her own. So actually, upon reflection, I think that was the author's intent, but it just kind of brought the enjoyment of it down for me a little bit. But I am still looking forward to the third book. So I ended up giving the second book, Honors Night, a three-star rating on Goodreads. And the last book that I finished this month was Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. After Confess, I thought, I know she can do better. She tweeted something the other day about Ugly Love being turned into a movie. And I thought, I need to pick that one up. And, ooh, was it good. It is new adult, so it is not for kids at all. But, ooh, it was good. It was steamy. It was very angsty. It was perfect. There are side characters that add a whole lot to it. Um... It has a hopeful message in the end, just about forgiving yourself and being able to move on from things that have happened to you in the past. And it was really, really good. I gave it five stars and I loved it. So, like I said, if you've never read Colleen Hoover and you're looking to get into her, Ugly Love is a great place to start. Of course, there's going to be a movie coming out and maybe someday it would be an amazing place to start because that is one of my favorite books of all time. 
So there you have it, the end of my November wrap-up. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading.